I'm an avid Spotify user and I love to discover new music. These two things don't really work well together. If you're a Spotify user, you'll know that every week you get a Discover Weekly where Spotify suggests you a bunch of new tracks based off what you've listened to in the previous week. The problem with Discover Weekly for me is that I listen to a lot of different musical genres. And so when I get uh, Discover Weekly, I have new tracks suggested to me that are a little bit all over the place in different musical genres and everything. What I really want is to have music suggested in playlist where the music is kind of like self-coherent. So all the different tracks are more or less connected to a same genre or to a same like artist of reference. Unfortunately, with Spotify, you can't have that. And that's why I built a little Python application that enables me to create custom playlists based off some C tracks. So in this video, I want to show you how this application works and how I put it together. And in the process, I'll show you how the Spotify API works and I'll discuss a little bit of the ideas that may be behind the recommendation systems that uh, Spotify use for suggesting music to its users. So let's get started. Here's the project in PyCharm. I've called it Spotify Playlist Generator. And here you can see the project structure with uh, a few different modules. So we have track.py, Spotify client.py, playlist.py, and create playlist.py. This one is the main script, so the entry point to the whole application. The script performs a number of steps using the Spotify Web API. The first step is to get the last play tracks by a user. Then the script asks the user to provide a number of C tracks among the last play tracks. These C tracks are then used for getting recommendation directly from the Spotify web API. Afterwards, uh, the script asks the user to provide a playlist name. With that playlist name, the script once again, using the Spotify web API, creates a new playlist programmatically. And the final step is to populate the playlist with the recommended tracks. Now that we've gained an understanding of the different steps performed by the script, it's time to delve into each of the different modules of the application. Track.py features the class track, which represents a piece of music on Spotify. A track object has a number of useful parameters like the name of the track, the Spotify track ID, and the artist who composed the track. This uh, class also features a create Spotify URI method that we can use to compose a URI that then we can use to communicate with the uh, Spotify web API. In playlist.py, we have the playlist class, which represents a Spotify playlist. Each playlist object has a name and a Spotify ID. The core functionalities of the application reside in the module SpotifyClient.py. Here we have the Spotify client class, which performs input-output operations using the Spotify web API. Spotify client has a couple of attributes. One is an authorization token that we can fetch directly from the Spotify website. And the other one is the Spotify user ID. The Spotify client class has four public methods. Each of these methods relies on a different Spotify API endpoint. The first method is called get last play tracks. And as the name of the method suggests, we can use this method to fetch the last tracks that a user has listened to on Spotify. To get the last play tracks, we can place a get request to an API endpoint. What we get back is a response with all of the different last play tracks. We can unpack that data structure and then create a list of tracks, which then we can return. Get track recommendations is a method which we can use to get a set of recommended tracks out of a number of C tracks, which we can pass in to an API endpoint. 
how can Spotify send us back recommended tracks based off some seed songs that we sent to the API? Well, I don't have a perfect answer to that because I don't know how the Spotify algorithm uh, works, but I can take an educated guess. And my guess is that this Spotify endpoint is using some form of content-based recommendation. But what content-based recommendation? Well, the idea here is that you extract some information directly from the content itself, in this case, songs, and then use that uh, information to recommend other content. Now, let's take a look at what information or what parameters Spotify extracts from the songs in its catalog. Here we are on the Spotify for Developers website looking at the documentation for the API endpoints that we used for getting recommendations directly from Spotify. Here we have a lot of juicy stuff, but I want to draw your attention down here to these tunable track attributes. So these are parameters that define a track and some of these parameters look into acoustic features so for example this acousticness tells us how much acoustic a certain track is and it's in a range between zero and one for example energy tells us how much energy a certain track uh, has we also have other types of parameters here, which are connected to more traditional musical concepts. So for example, we have key or mode, which can be major or minor, or even tempo, which tells us how fast uh, a certain track is. And we also have some kind of higher level metadata. For example, popularity tells us how popular a certain track is. Now. It, with regard with this endpoint, we can use these attributes to filter out certain songs from the recommendations. So we could say, hey, Spotify, give me recommendations based off certain uh, seed tracks, but please do exclude all the tracks that have a densibility that's above 0.6, for example. These are parameters that Spotify uses, leverages, in order to define a track. And this is the whole point of content-based recommendation. So we are defining tracks based off some parameters. We now know that we can use parameters to describe tracks in a formalized way, but the ultimate question is, how can we leverage this information to come up with recommendations? So let's take a look at an example for understanding this. Let's assume we only have two parameters for describing tracks, for example, densibility and energy. With this simple representation, we can visualize all of our tracks on a two-dimensional space. On the x-axis of this space, we have densibility and on the y-axis, we have energy. A point in this two-dimensional space represents a song that has a certain value for densibility and a certain value for energy. Let's add in more tracks. Now we can draw a line between two songs and that line is very important because the length of the line represents how distant the two songs are in our mathematical formal formalization of these tracks. The closer the two points and the more similar the two correspondent tracks are. Now, I guess you're getting where I'm getting at. It's basically we can use this idea of distance or its inverse similarity to create recommendation based on content information. In other words, we can think that when we are hitting the API endpoint that gets us a recommendation based off seeds, what we are doing is we are sending a reference track and then the algorithm is looking for neighbor points or neighbor tracks. Let's assume we want to get back three recommended tracks. In our example here, we would get the three red points there because they are the closest one to the reference green dot. What you saw is for sure a simplification of how the Spotify algorithm works, but it's important to give you an idea of how content-based recommendation operates.
This type of recommendation comes with a major drawback, which is that you tend to get stuck in your own bubble, for example, musical bubble if you're on Spotify, and that's because you're always getting recommendations based off some reference tracks that most of the time are the tracks that you usually listen to. And so it's difficult to get out of your musical niche and explore new things, because at the end of the day, you just get proposed time and again music that resembles the music that you've just heard. Now that we have an idea of how we're getting back recommendations from the Spotify API, it's time to move on with the code. Back in our Spotify client class, the next method of interest is create playlist, which accepts a parameter called name. This is the playlist name that we want to create. And for doing that, we place a post request to a Spotify API endpoint and we generate a new playlist. The last method of this class is populate playlist, which accepts a couple of parameters, playlist and a list of tracks. The method places a post request to a Spotify API endpoint and it adds a bunch of tracks to a playlist. By now we are familiar with a track, playlist and Spotify client modules. The next step is to check out the main script or create playlist.py. Let's check that out. And here we are in the create playlist script. The first thing we want to do is to instantiate a Spotify client. For doing that, we can use the Spotify client constructor and we should pass a couple of parameters. The first one being the Spotify authorization token and the second one, your Spotify user ID. This is sensitive information, so you don't want to hard code it, but rather you should pull it from environment variables. To retrieve your Spotify user ID, you can use this uh, Spotify endpoint called Get Current Users Profile. And when you use it, you'll just get your ID along with other information about your profile. To get an authorization token, you can go to the Create a Playlist endpoint on the Spotify for Developers website, and then you can go down here and click Get Token. Now, you can get a lot of different scopes, but what we'll need really is to, the ability to modify public playlists or private playlists and to read recently played tracks. So once you've done that, you can request a token and then you can just get it back from here. With the credentials, we can instantiate a Spotify client object, which is going to be necessary for running all the operations in this script. The next step is to get the last played tracks. But before we get them, we ask the user how many tracks he or she wants to fetch from his or her own history. The next step is to uh, print back all of these tracks onto the console. And this is going to be needed because then we'll ask the user to uh, tell us which tracks to use as reference for getting recommendations. Once we have these tracks, the next step is to get the recommended tracks based off these seed tracks. And once we have these recommended tracks, we print them back onto the console. And in the next step, we ask the user to provide a playlist name. After that, we create the playlist. And as a final step, we populate the playlist with the recommended tracks. It's now time to see if the application works. So fire up the terminal and exports the two environment variables. If you don't know how to do that, it's quite simple. You'll do just a export, you get the name of the environment variable, and you'll just pass in some value that obviously you get from the Spotify website. You'll do that for the authorization token, and you'll do the same thing for the user ID. Okay, so I already did that, so I am good to go and do a Python create playlist.py. So I'm running the scripts and now I'm asked, so how many tracks would you like to visualize from my history? So let's say 20. Okay, here we go. So there's quite a lot of <laughs> classical music. So 
Uh, let's see what comes next. So enter a list of up to five trucks you'd like to use as seeds. Use indexes separated by a space. So I think I'm going to go with index five, six, and seven. So this three uh, violin, so three movements from a Ludwig, Ludwig van Beethoven violin concert, concerto. So we'll do five, six, and seven. And we go there, and that's cool. So here I just get a list of all the tracks that will be uh, recommended or will be imported in my new playlist. And so now I should provide a playlist name. So let's say violin inspired uh, playlist. So uh, let me show you in my profile, Spotify profile here under like this playlist. I don't have that playlist. Now, when I, get enter so you see that now i have this violin inspired playlist so the application works great and here as you can see i get a lot of classical music in here which makes sense and this is how you create custom playlists using python and the spotify web api if you've liked the video please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel to get more content like this let me know what you'd like me to cover next. Are you interested in learning more about how Discover Weekly works? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. That's all for today. I hope I'll see you next time. Cheers.